Okay. All right. So we're going to go live here in the Facebook group, uh, YouTube, LinkedIn channel, Facebook business page, Facebook group. Let's go ahead and go live on IG real quick. Check the connection. And let's go live on TikTok. All right. So we're live on IG. Uh, we're live in the Facebook group. And all right. Perfect. We're going to go live here on the TikTok phone, the Batman phone. The Batman phone. See what people we got over here in the wild, wild west today. All right. All right. So welcome to the today's live. All right. So we're going live on one, two, three, seven different platforms at the same time. Technology is crazy. First of all, we're going live on my desktop in our Facebook group, Sales Revolution. We got about 25,000 of you guys, crazy guys in there. The Facebook business page, we got like 67,000 of you on there. My personal Facebook, hello, friends and family, our LinkedIn channel, YouTube channel on my desktop. We're also going live here on the IG phone. We call you guys the IG phone. And then we're going live on the TikTok phone. We love you guys on TikTok. Now, sometimes you TikTok guys and gals, sometimes you need a Snickers bar. We kind of notice they get a little bit grumpy over there. We don't know what's going on. We call it the TikTok phone like the wild, wild west, but we still love you guys. So if you guys hear me now, IG guys, you guys are just really nice. You guys even compliment my hair. I mean, they're that nice. They say nice things about my hair. So today we're going to go and we're going to talk about for the next 20, 25 minutes about two objections that I know all of you get. And I'm assuming all of you lose sales every single week, every single month, every year because of these two objections. And it doesn't matter the industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you sell B2C, business to consumer. It doesn't matter if you sell B2B, business to business. I know you get these objections because in the four industries I was in, that I made a bit over 33 million in straight commissions in my 17 year sales career. Two of them were B2C industries and two of them were B2B. And I got both of these objections in both of those, in all four of those industries. Okay. Now, what do you say? How do you respond to a prospect when they say, ah, this sounds really good, but you know, Jane, um, we just really need to set on this and we really need to pray about it. We really need it. This is a big decision for us. We really need to pray about it. How do you respond to that objection? Even when I was in B2B sales, talking to Fortune 1000 companies, you would be surprised at a CEO or a COO or a department head that would literally say, this sounds really good. I brought it up with the board. But now we really need to pray about it. I kid you not, even in B2B, but especially if you're in B2C, you're going to get this objection quite a bit. So we're going to go over that objection. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Leon, uh, Lottie, there's a bunch of you coming in on the Facebook group now, 67 of you or so. Well, that's between Facebook and, and YouTube and, and uh, LinkedIn. I, th I think this is wonderful. That girl thinks she's bad. That's on YouTube. Well, that's an interesting name. Welcome. All right. So how do you overcome that objection? What do you say when that first happens? And the prospect said, this sounds really good, but I need to pray about it. Okay. So what do you say how to respond to that? And then also, how do you respond to an objection where they say, this sounds really good, but now's not really a good time for us. Or it's just, we don't have a lot of time to devote to this right now. Now that's an objection you can get if you sell in B2C or B2B in the four industries I was in, both Two B to B, two B to C. I got that same objection here and there. Now these are not major objections that you get every day, but they are objections you will encounter in your sales career. Okay, what would Jesus do? Somebody just said on IG. Well, Jesus knows any PQ. I'm assuming, right? All right, perfect. Uh, okay, so we're going to discuss how how do you overcome those? How do you get prospects to overcome those two objections? I need to pray about it, and we just don't have a lot of time for this right now. OK, now, if you're brand new to our Facebook group, Sales Revolution, or if you're brand new to our YouTube channel here on my desktop, or if you're brand new to LinkedIn, follow me now, or our Facebook uh, business page, We've got like thousand, like 67,000 of you on there now. Or if you're brand new to TikTok, we just started here on TikTok two months ago, we got 31,000 of you on there. If you're brand new to IG, we just started on IG six months ago, we got 108,000 of you on there. And you're like, who the hell is this guy in the pink shirt? Well, we call it salmon, the salmon shirt. 
What is he talking about? So if you don't know who I am, my name is Jeremy Miner. I'm the founder and chairman of Seventh Level. We are a global sales training company that trains salespeople exactly like you watching me right now. So we train sales professionals like you. We train sales executives like you. We train sales management like you, managers like you. We train C-level executives like you. We train coaches like you. We train consultants like you. We train entrepreneurs, business owners like you. And we train you and your teams to transform the way you sell, the way you communicate by using specific skilled questions and techniques that actually work with human behavior rather than work against it. What's the difference in that? Because are you using techniques that trigger sales resistance? Do you notice you get a lot of objections early in the conversation? Well, there's something you're saying or not asking this triggering fight or flight. Okay. Now, how do we do that? We're going to train you what is called neuro emotional persuasion questions with the right tonality, because it's not just the question, it's how you're delivering, it's how you're asking it. That trains your prospect, okay, that puts your prospects at ease. It eliminates sales pressure. Can you imagine that? Good Lord. And triggers your prospects to actually want to engage with you, to want to open up to you because you trigger curiosity. And it triggers them to be open to what you're actually offering. That way they start to view you differently than everybody else. They view all these other salespeople like just another salesperson trying to stuff their solution down their throat. We're going to train you how to get them to view you as the expert or the trusted authority who's going to get them the results they want. We're going to solve their problems and get where they want to go. Okay. Now, if you're on the live right now, I want you to go down to your phone because I know you guys are on your phone. I know what you guys do all day. Go down to your phone right now if you're on the live and I want you to post hashtag live. So if you're on your phone right now or a computer, you're on this live, go down to the bottom of it and post hashtag live. So IG phone, I want each of you, I better see hundreds of hashtag live. There's 120 of you on here on IG right now. So go post hashtag live. If you're on the IG phone over here, thank you run for Christy and try. Uh, if you're on the TikTok phone over here, like boy mama 88 is, it's a good username, maybe got some boys, um, go post hashtag live. So if you're on the TikTok phone, post hashtag live. If you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, 25,000 of you in there now, go post hashtag live. If you're on YouTube, hashtag live. If you're on our LinkedIn, post hashtag live. If you're on the Facebook business page, hashtag live. If you're on my personal Facebook, because we're going live on there on the desktop, hashtag live. Now, if you're on the replay, I want you to post hashtag replay. If I don't see hundreds, hashtag lives, likes, I'm not going to train you guys how to overcome those two objections. Why would I? I could just go golf out here. Well, it is 113 degrees. It is pretty hot in Scottsdale right now. All right. So hashtag live, hashtag uh, replay. Now, I want each of you to grab your phone and I want you to smash the heart button. So IG guys, we love you. Go smash the heart button. Smash the heart button. Smash the hell out of the heart button. All right. If you're on TikTok, smash the heart button. If you're in the Facebook group, smash the like button, smash the heart button. The more times you smash the heart button, you smash the like button, triggers more engagement on those platforms and more people are able to see this training. So you're helping other people get where they want to go in sales as well. All right. Enough about me. None of you guys care about the guy in the salmon shirt. All you guys care about is yourselves. You're so selfish. All right. So how do you overcome these two objections? Now, I'm not going to train you on this on how what you're saying and what you're not asking is probably triggering these objections to happen because we don't have time to go through the psychology of what you're doing wrong that's causing them to say these things. What I'm going to do is show you how when it does happen, I love Scottsdale, Rachel Sibley. Oh, come over to our office sometime. We're here in Scottsdale Quarter. Should we tell them the floor? Might have a mad rush over here if we tell them the floor we're on. We're in Scottsdale Quarter. You have to find us in Scottsdale Quarter. All right. So our corporate, this is where our corporate, head, I know they might know the company. This is our corporate headquarters in the USA or Scottsdale, Arizona. Our international headquarters are in Sydney, Australia. For all you Sydney people out there in Australia, you can come by our international headquarters. All right. So how do you, how do you overcome the, when the prospect says, I need to, to pray about it? So we're going to focus on, I need to pray about it. And then I'm going to show you how to get them to overcome. Now's not a, I, I just don't have a lot of time to put into this, right? I don't have time to focus on this. That's an objection a lot of you guys get as well. So we're going to go about that. I need to pray about it first. All right. The first thing that we have to understand when the prospect says this sounds great, 
it's a big decision. I really need to pray about it. The first thing we have to do, like any concern that you ever get, doesn't matter if it's money, think about it, need to talk with somebody else, my spouse, business partners, the board of directors, the man who lives in a van down by the river, my CPA, whatever objection is, we first have to clarify what the concern actually means and what's behind the concern instead of just throwing off a rebuttal because it might not be the concern you really thought it was, okay? Now this, like I said, this is an objection that I want to pray about it that you will get if you sell most things in B2C, but you're also going to get this sometimes with a lot of B2B. Like two of the two of the four industries I sold in, two of the four were in B2B. I sold industries where I was talking to CEOs, the Fortune 100,000 companies, some Fortune 500, maybe Fortune most Fortune 1,000 and SMB department heads, and sometimes, not every day, but sometimes I would literally get after I went through everything I, we really need to pray about this. We're a big family here in the company. We really just need to set down the ownership and really pray on this. All right. So let's go through. I'm going to role play with myself how to respond to this. Prospect says, you know, um, Barry, this, you, you know, we really appreciate your time. This is a really big decision for us. And we just really need to pray about it. Okay. Now, do you really think? We're going to go pray and ask God right when you leave if they should purchase your product or service. Nine times out of 10, that's not the real concern. That's not a concern at all. Okay. It's like the I want to think it over concern. It's not like they sit there for two weeks and they think about it, right? They have a concern that they're not willing to tell you because they don't feel comfortable enough. So they're saying, I want to pray about it or I want to think it over. It's very similar. Now, there are some people, granted, that will literally go pray about it. And you, this is how you resolve it. So I'm going to show you how to do this, okay? You simply agree with them first. You don't say, well, well, yes, but we went over. That just triggers more sales resistance. You're done. You're done, okay? So the way to disarm the prospect when they say, this is a big decision for us really to pray about it, say, yeah, yeah, Jane, that's, that's not a problem, of, of course. Now, when you say you need to pray about it, what specific parts of what we've gone over do you feel you really need to pray about, Jane? Let me repeat what I just said. And then I'm going to show you what they're going to say. And I'm going to show you how to respond. And I'm going to show you why I said what I did. Yeah, that's not a problem, of course. Now, when you say pray about it, what specific parts of what we went over do you feel you really need to pray about? And see how I lean in and show empathy. What parts, what specific parts of what we've gone over do you feel like you really need to pray about? Even if I'm on the phone and they can't see me, I'm going to do the same thing because that body language affects what? It affects your tonality. If you just sit here and like, that's not a problem. Now, when you say pray about it, what specific parts of what we went over do you feel like you really need to pray about, Joan? So you don't move. It affects your tone. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. Now, when you lean in, show empathy. When you say pray about it, what specific parts of what we've gone over do you feel like you really need to pray about? And you really emphasize it. You really need to pray about. Okay. You slow that down with your tone. That you really, what specific parts of what we went over do you feel like you really need to pray about? And every single time, you know what they're going to say? Well, it, we really need to pray because, and then they're going to tell you their concern. So let's say they, it's a money concern. What parts do you really feel like we need to pray about? Now, when you say what parts or what aspects of what we've gone over do you really need to pray about, then they, they feel more comfortable, right? They tell you the concern. Now you kind of know what the concern, you know how to address it, you can close it. So let me role play in this situation. Prospect says, yeah, <coughs> I mean, it's just a big decision like, we, we really we need to sit down and really pray about it because it's a lot of money and we're just not sure we have the budget for it. What the hell did you just find out? Excuse my French. You just found out that they have a money concern, that it's a lot of money and there's some uncertainty there. OK, so now you know that it's a money concern, not a pray about a concern. That's not really a concern. OK, now what you're going to do at that point is you're going to help them overcome the money concern. Now, we don't have time to train on that. 
We train all of that in our virtual training courses. In fact, we have a, a new word for word. This is just one of our like 25 different training products. Word for word, top 50 objection obliteration scripts and virtual training course just on objections now. It's a four hour training course just on the top. It's actually 52 objections. I put two extra in because I'm being nice. But it's word for word, every objection you've ever got. Just one of the 25 training programs. Okay, so we train all of that in those. I don't have time to go through the money concern right here. So let's say you help them resolve the money concern, okay? After you do that, you then have to come back and address the prey uh, thing again, okay? So now that you've found out the real concern by saying what specific, oh yeah, no, that's not a problem. What specific parts of, of what, what, specific, what specific aspects of what we've gone over do you feel like you really need to pray about? Emphasize that, really need to pray about. And they're going to tell you, I really need to pray about it because we just don't know if we have the money. We just don't know if we have the time, whatever it is. Then you're going to resolve that. And then you're going to come back and say, now, let's come back to the, the, you know, praying about this. How do you feel? How do you feel? Not think. How do you feel God would feel about you? And then you repeat back what they said they wanted. How do you feel God would feel about now? You can't do this initially. You do what I said to do first. You have to set it up the right way. Then after you find out the real concern and help them resolve it, then you come back and say, now how do you feel God would feel about you? And then you repeat back what they said they wanted. Now, let me give you two industry-specific examples. I'm going to give you one in B2C, and I'm going to give you one in B2B. Now, we train 158 different industries at this point. Okay, According to Forbes, how many industries there are on planet Earth? 158. Did you know that we train in all hundred there's subsets of each 158 and we train in all of those. Okay. So I'm going to give you two different examples, one for B2C, one for B2B. So in this example, let's say if you sold life insurance, that would be B2C. And a couple says, we just need to think about it. We need to, or we need to pray about it. And you go through what specific aspects of what we covered or what we went over. Do you really feel like you need to pray about not in that tonality, but the tonality I showed you. Well, and then, they go over the budget thing, and then you come back and say, now, how do you feel? How do you feel God would feel about you having the financial protection in place for your wife and kids? So when you do pass away, they're completely taken care of. No stress or worries like most people have if they don't have the right insurance in place. What do you think God would want you to do? See how I lowered my voice and leaned in? Okay. All right. Now, you're never, I can assure you, if you do that the way I showed you, you're never going to have somebody that comes back, nope, I would don't, I don't think he'd want, I don't think God would want me to do X and Y and Z. Okay. Just as an example. Now, let's say if you're in B2B sales, how would you relanguage that part right there? You do everything I said. That's not a problem. Now, as far as praying about it, what what aspects of what we've covered the last few months do you feel like you and the firm really need to pray about? Okay. Well, we don't know if we can get the budget or whatever it is. And you resolve that concern and then come back to how do you feel? So how do you feel God? And let's say in this example, let's say if you sold lead generation services to SMB companies. As an example, okay, train lots of people in that space too, lots of companies in that space. So let's say, what would it sound like for B2B? It's a little bit different. How do you feel? God, how do you, oh, let me adjust the TikTok phone. We got some angry people over here. Got to give them a Snickers bar, guys. All right. So, how, John, how do you feel? So, so you're, let's say you're talking to a couple of decision makers. Let's say you're on Zoom or in the boardroom. How do you feel God would feel about you guys getting a, higher quality lead to your sales teams so that you can really start scaling the company and be able to help far more prospects solve their problems? What do you think he'd want you to do? See, I leaned in, I showed the empathy there. Do you train in home care industry? Demarius, we train 158 industries, every industry on planet earth, according to Forbes. And yes, that means we train your industry too. I'm always sarcastic. Yes, we train Tons of people in your industries, tons of companies, tons of salespeople. All right. That's how you help prospects overcome the I want to pray objection. 
Crypto service says, do we pray to the lizard people? Got to be careful with Mark Zuckerberg. He's one of the biggest decision makers in the world. I don't know. That's I've never had that question, whoever you are. But anyway, there you go. How would you use NPQ for Verizon phone sales? Much differently than what I did there. But there would be different aspects that I would use right there, too. That's all in our virtual training courses. I don't have time to go through industry-specific examples for thousands of you on all these lives right now. Love you, though. All right. Here we go. How do you overcome this objection? Who in here loses sales? Now, hey, guys, guys and gals, a lot of you are hitting us up in DMs right now. If you want to learn, because what, what we do in these little lives, like in our Facebook group, and I go live on IG and TikTok like once a week. I go live in the Facebook group more like three or four times a week. But what we do in these lives, these are like little nibbles for you. They're like little hors d'oeuvres. We just let you chew on some stuff. If you actually want to learn advanced skills that work with human behavior like our clients are, who sell in the same exact industry you are in now, who probably make two, three, four, five times what you are making now, just because they have the right skills, they have the right training, then all you got to do is message me directly. If you're on IG, message me directly right now. If you're on TikTok, message me directly right now. If you're in the side, the Facebook group, message me directly right now. If you're on my Facebook, message me directly. LinkedIn, message me directly. Facebook business page, message me directly. YouTube, you can't message me directly. You got to post hashtag NEPQ. Now, if you can't figure out how to message me directly, just post hashtag NEPQ, hashtag NEPQ, and either myself or someone on our team will message you more training options. Look, if you, in your industry you're in right now, I don't care what industry it is because we train every industry on planet Earth right now, according to Forbes. If you want to start making 10 grand a month, every single month in commissions, now you got to learn the right skills and actually apply them. You can't just like wave your magic wand and say hocus pocus and it happens, right? You have to put in work to learn the skills. Then you have to use them. You want to start making 10 grand a month in commissions every month. You want to start making 15 grand a month in commissions with what you sell now. Or let's say you're already there and you're like, how do I go to 20 grand a month in commissions? How do I get to 25 grand a month? How do I go to 30 grand a month in commissions in my industry? How do I make 40 or 50 or 60 plus thousand a month in commissions? If you want to learn those skills, like we have clients that sell exactly what you are now, thousands of them who are making that every single month. We have over 7,000 unsolicited testimonials in the last two years. Okay. There's a reason why Inc. Mag Inc. 5,000 list and Inc. Magazine ranked us the number one fastest growing sales training company, sales training company in the United States and overall company, uh, number 1,232 fastest growing in the United States last year. It looks like this year we're going to win that again, two years in a row, back to back quadruple growth or something, five times growth. There's a reason why. Okay. So if you want to learn those skills, message me directly. Because what we teach you on these lives is like little nibbles. It's like, it's like a tenth of 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 one percent, a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of that that we train in our virtual training programs and our group training programs. All right. Now, how do we overcome this objection? You know, this sounds really good, but I just want to make sure it's the right time for me to focus on this. Or I just I I don't know if we have the time to devote to this project right now. Now, in the comments, how many of you get this objection? That I just went over. I just want to make sure it's the right time for me. Now's not a good time for us. I just, I, I just don't know if we have the time to devote this project. Say, yeah, that's me. I get that objection quite a bit. In the comments, wherever you're at, say, I get that objection quite a bit. All right. All right. So how do you overcome it? It's really easy once you learn the skills. Now, once you get in our virtual training programs as a client, what I just went over with you, you're going to be able to learn how to prevent probably 60 to 70% of the objections you get right now. So let's say if you get 30 objections a week, why not learn how to prevent like 20 or 22 of those from even happening and get way more lay down sales? I don't know. It sounds easier to me, a lot more profitable. Selling becomes a lot more fun the less objections you get because you can prevent them from happening. But how do you respond if this does happen? Okay. Now you'll get this objection quite a bit in any B2C industry. Well, most B2C industries where they're required to do something. If you sell life insurance, not, somebody's not going to say, I just don't have time to devote to my policy. That is making sense. But if you sell, let's say, high ticket coaching, you sell some type of program that trains them how to do something, that they have to implement something that they have to do on their end, you're going to get that objection a lot. Okay. Uh, you know, even if you sold like real estate, like is a, if you're a real estate agent and they have to put in time 
to go actually out and look at properties, sometimes you might get that objection, even as a real estate agent. If you sell in B2B sales, you're going to get this quite a bit. If you sold SaaS or some type of software where their staffs have to learn it, they have to implement it, they have to train on it. Several types of B2B sales where they have to do something on their end as a company, you're going to get that time. They don't have time to devote to that type of project. You'll get that all the time. Okay. Now there's ways to prevent it, but if you can't, I'm going to show you how to resolve it. Prospect says, you know, I want to make sure we just, we really want to make sure we like this. We're in, but we just really want to make sure it's the right time to really focus on this. Here's your first question. How do you, how do you mean? It's just a simply clarifying question. You, you can say this. You can say, yeah, that's not a problem. Now, when you say the right time to focus on this, tell me how, how you mean by that, just so I have a better understanding. Or you can simply say, yeah, how do you mean exactly? Just a simple clarifying question. Because do you know exactly what they mean when they say, I just want to make sure it's the right time to focus on this? I don't know what they mean. Because every prospect might be different in what they mean and how they interpret that. See how that works? All right. All right. Now. Here's, uh, I'm going to give you an example here. So this is just a generic example. And then I'm going to give you an industry specific example. Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you, or now, you know, I just want to make sure it's the right time for me to really focus on this in, in what way? See, it's a clarifying question. Or you say, how do you mean exactly? Or how do you mean by the right time exactly? Just so I understand. Or, or what do you mean by that? Or um, in what way though? See, there's different clarifying questions. Well, let's say the prospect says, well, I'm just, let's say you're selling B2C in this example. Well, I'm just really busy with my kids. Uh, I'm taking college classes. You know, my kids have soccer practice. I just work all the time, just whatever excuse they throw out. And then you're going to say this, well, um, how much time do you think you need to put into this? Just so I understand where that's coming from. It's a simple question because you got to realize a lot of people just think they're going to have to put in more time than maybe what they need to. So first of all, we have to clarify that. This is if you sold B2C right now. That can even work in B2B as well. I'm going to show you different examples. Well, how much time do you feel like you, you need to put into this just so I understand? Prospect says, well, it looks like from what you went over with us that we'd have to put in at least 10, 15, maybe 20 hours a week with my work schedule. I just don't know how I could get that done, especially with my kids after school. Then you could say this. Well, I guess you could. Um I don't really have clients that would put in that many hours. I mean, most of our clients would just put in maybe three, four hours a week to get those type of results we talked about. Would you be able to do three or four hours a week to get that type of result? And you repeat back whatever the result is. That's just a generic example. Now, most people are like, oh, gosh, yeah, I thought it was going to take like 20 hours a week. I could do three hours a week. That's no problem. Concern's gone. Okay. Now, for other prospects, that's not what the concern meant when they said they didn't have enough time. It meant something different. I'm going to show you that. Okay. So like I said, most of the time you can resolve the time concern by simply asking a few questions about the time they think they need. Cause most of the time they don't know what they think they need. Okay. Now <laughs> here's another way to resolve that same concern. I'm going to give you a different way to handle it. And I'm going to give you an industry specific example from a crazy industry. You would never think would be sales. And we train lots of companies in this too. Let's say that you are a marriage psychiatrist. Any psychiatrist on here? Let's say you're a marriage or therapy coach or psychiatrist. Are you in sales? Mm, I'm pretty sure you are, right? Because you're trying to persuade and influence people to purchase what you're offering, your, your training, your consulting to help them overcome their problems. So I want to show you how this works, even in a funky industry most of you wouldn't even think about, okay? just to show it works. Okay. Uh, so let's say that you focus on marriage coaching or marriage counseling as a psychiatrist or a coach, because we train all of that too. And that's, you're helping couples not split up and have a great marriage or relationship. Okay. Swarovski says, yeah, you know, Amy, I just want to make sure it's the right time for me to really focus on this. In what way? In what way, John? Or how do you, how do you mean, how do you mean it's the right time? How do you mean it's the right time? Well, I'm just really busy with my job right now. I got promoted, which is great, but man, I'm working like 60 hours a week. Then you simply agree. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, and then you lean in, show empathy. Um, can I, can I make a suggestion? Lower your voice. The empathy comes out the tonality. You don't say, 
Um, that's not a problem. Can I make a suggestion? Sounds weird. Don't do that. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, can I, can I make a suggestion, John? They're going to say, sure. Nobody's like, nope, you cannot make a suggestion. Nobody's going to do that. They're going to say, sure. Well, um, how would you, I guess, be able to repair your relationship with her if you don't take the necessary time to learn how to dissolve conflicts and really start to emotionally connect with her again? See what I just did? I asked the how-to question. Well, how will you be able to repair your relationship, let's say, with him this time? You're talking to a female. How will you be able to repair your relationship with your husband or your spouse, whatever you want to say, with your spouse, if you don't take the necessary time to really be able to learn how to dissolve these conflicts you told me about and really start connecting with them again? Notice my empathy there. See how that works? Prospect, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just have to figure something out. Well... You say, well, are you um, are you willing to settle for that? Softly, that's a soft challenge. Well, are you um, are you willing to settle for that? They're probably going to say, well, I mean, I guess if I had to. So now, some people will say no, and that's a different response. But let's say in this example, they're like, well, I guess if I have to, I don't have a choice. Well, I guess if I had to, I wouldn't have a choice. Then you simply say. Well, whose choice is it if you settle or not? Well, I guess it'd be my choice. And then you say this. This is the risk question. Will you tell me, John, is it more risky for you and your spouse to get the funds together and dedicate the hour or two a week or maybe three hours over the next 90 days to finally learn once and for all to heal your relationship so you feel connected once again and your marriage starts thriving for you and your children? Or is it more risky for you to really do it nothing at all, push it on the back burner again? The problems of fighting, lack of intimacy and lack of connection stay the same. It doesn't change. And then you two end up getting a divorce. Which is more risky for you and your family? You see the tone I said that in? Do you think they're going to come back? No, well, it's more risky if I uh, pay for the first. No, they're not going to say like, oh. they're going to say, yeah, they're like, yeah, that's right. Do you, do you want to change all that and have the same feelings for her that you had when you first got married? Yeah, I want that so bad. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what you sell. I just gave you an example of marriage counseling to show you how it works. Just a crazy industry I threw out there. All right. All right. So I hope that helped you guys today. Just gave you about three or four different examples on I want to pray about it and I don't have the time for this right now. OK, now what I just went over with you is really like 10 percent of the 10 percent of the 10 is like 1 percent of the 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 1 percent. Gave you little hors d'oeuvres here on these lives, little, little nibbles for you guys, little, throw out some nibbles for you, some crumbs. If you want to learn these skills that work with human behavior so you don't even get most of those objections, if you want to start making 10 grand a month in commissions consistently with what you sell right now, or let's say you want to start making 15 or 20 grand a month in commissions every month, what you sell, not dips, not one month you do, the next month you're in half, one month you do, the next month in your half. That just means your sales process, you're winging it. It doesn't have a process that works with human behavior. You're getting the easy sales. But you're losing all these people, all these prospects on the fence that with the right skills come over to your side rather than staying on the status quo side. That's a big difference. Let's say you're already making 20 grand a month. How do you go to 25 or 30 grand a month with what you sell? If you say the same things, how do you go to 35 or 40 grand a month or 50 grand a month plus with what you sell in your industry? So if you want those skills like our clients have who sell in the same industry you're in right now, who sell very similar products and services you do right now, who make double, triple, quadruple, or more than what you do now, then it's easy to simply message me. If you're on IG, send me a message right now. If you don't know how to send a message on IG or TikTok, post hashtag NEPQ. 
Somebody will message you back, either myself or someone on our team. How much for one-on-one -on -one consulting? $3.5 billion per hour. Hopefully that answered your question. If somebody asked that on TikTok. You know, I'm just being sarcastic. Message me. Um, if you're in the Facebook group, Sales Revolution, message me directly right now. If you're on my Facebook, message me directly. If you're on LinkedIn, message me directly. If you're on YouTube, you can't message me directly. Sorry, guys. Post hashtag NEPQ. Now, if you haven't joined our free Facebook group, you might want to think about doing that if you want to sell more. I mean, it has no impact on us here in our offices at seventh level. If you don't learn how to sell more, if you don't make more commissions, who does it have an impact on? It has an impact on you and your family, right? Because you're going to work the same amount of hours, talk to the same amount of prospects. Why not double or triple your conversion and closing percentage? You double or triple your money. I don't know. Call me crazy. Might want to think about that. So if you want to join our free Facebook group, we're going to have people post that here on uh, IG. We'll have Felicia or Val post the free uh, Facebook group. It's just salesrevolution.pro. Same thing on TikTok. Go to salesrevolution.pro. Salesrevolution.pro. Do I need to say it one more time? Salesrevolution.pro. Salesrevolution.pro. And uh, right when you join, somebody on my team, either myself, Marco Cortese, our CRO, or Matt Ryder, our CEO, or somebody in our team will say that they are from the seventh level team. That's the code word. So you know they're real. They're not some crypto person trying to sell you crypto or something. Uh, I, I do like Bitcoin. Anyways, but they'll message you some different training options and you might even be able to book a call with one of our team members and they can go through all the different training options and programs we have. Once we understand what you make per month commissions compared to where you're wanting to be and what your industry is, then the team member will match you up with the best virtual training course or an and or group training courses that we have to get you the uh, biggest ROI the quickest. Okay. We don't know that unless we talk to you. Okay. Nothing we can do. So just message me directly and join the free Facebook group. Um, uh, Chris Nan. Yeah. Chris is in our TikTok. Thank you for doing that, Chris. Hey, Val's there. Hop in. Uh, we go live in the Facebook group about three to four times a week with different Q&As, different nibbles, different little nibbles, Q&As. You want to be like our clients, though, who are making double, triple, quadruple what you do, selling the exact same thing you are. Um, that's in our, our uh, client training portals. All right, everybody, I got to get out of here. I got to go shoot a bunch of reels here with Blake. Peace, love. Thank you. I will go live tomorrow in the Facebook group. I'm not going live on IG or TikTok tomorrow. Sorry, guys. I love you. But I'm going live in the Facebook group tomorrow only. Uh, and uh, yeah, so going live in the Facebook group tomorrow only. And I'm interviewing every Wednesday. We interview a new client, completely new industry. And we break down their NEQ sales process that we taught them. The client has to make at least 30 grand a month in commissions compared to where they used to be when they first started. And we're interviewing a gentleman that went from about five grand a month in commissions in his industry Tori, I think it's like 11 months ago. And after about three months, he went from like five to like 12, then like 12 to 17, 17 to like 25. He now averages right around 20 to 32 grand a month in commissions consistently selling the exact same thing he was before as a W-2 rep. So we're going to break down Tori's sales process and we're going to show you some different things we've taught him that's going to help you sell more. That's only going to be in our Facebook group tomorrow. That'll be live at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And there might be a replay if you're lucky. All right, peace, love. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Uh, TikTok, we'll see you guys soon. I'm going to stop here on.